<sighs> 10 o'clock. Okay. I don't, I have a feeling this won't go well. Just a feeling. Just a little feeling. What it is, scallywags. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Pac-Man Case channel show video that you are to watch right now. Uh, we're going to be talking about some really, really interesting things today. How's the pie? So good. And when I say interesting, I mean things that are interesting to me. And those are comic books and comic book video games. Things that are related to comic said video. Okay, so here's the here's the situation. I loved comics as a little kid. Wolverine was the very first character that I fell in love with due to a Scholastics book fair, and I received my very first X-Men book. And I thought that was amazing. Moved into my teens, Fox came on board, I loved the X-Men, the Spider-Man cartoon came out too, and I was hooked on Peter Parker. So you had your Spider-Man, and you had his rogues, and his villains, and they were some of the coolest characters uh, that was created in the Spider-Man universe that I had ever seen. And there has been no shortage of video games for Spider-Man as well. Last but not least, when I was in my dark phase, <laughs> my, okay. Holy schizophrenia. Dark Knight, that guy, Mr. Bruce Wayne himself, Batman, stole my heart. For quite a while, I was a Batman fan. I had a Batman vinyl on my truck for a while, a Batman patch on my arm, on my jacket, because I thought I was super cool. I'm by winning. I went here and I went there. Now what? I've moved away from those characters in recent years. So this is the longest introduction to some of my favorite comic book characters and what I believe is the best games that they've been in. Let's do it. First on the list, the Emerald Archer out of DC, and that is Green Arrow. This guy has been on television show for, I wanna say it's going on seven seasons for Green Arrow, um, which has really kind of boosted his popularity in general in the comic book culture scene. Um, but this guy is really, really cool, an awesome archer, and I found the favorite game that he is in um, is Injustice. Now, there was Injustice 1 and Injustice 2, um, and he's very cool in both of them. His combos are awesome, he can spin around his bow to attack people. Um, he can change out his arrows uh, to have like electricity or ice. And uh, man, Injustice got Green Arrow right. If you have not gotten a chance to play Injustice, it is time to get off your butt and play a game. I want to say it's like five bucks right now at GameStop. So if you're quarantined to home, get a little Injustice. There has been some amazing Batman games uh, that came out even just within the last 10 years, maybe longer, but the Batman Arkham series, man, that takes the cake for Batman games. Some of the coolest combos. Um, but the reason I'm bringing these ones up is they actually contain in a couple of them uh, as either da uh, download or secret maps or uh, DLC content or challenges, you can play as Nightwing. And Nightwing has been in a lot of different games if you count Robin. Um, but once he transitioned to Nightwing, man, I fell in love with him. I thought he was even cooler than Batman, if that can even happen. Uh, Nightwing, he runs his show out of Bloodhaven versus Gotham. Uh, he's a little bit more less bullshit than Batman takes sometimes, uh, and he's a lot more athletic than him, so his agility stands out whenever his character gets designed in games. But one of my favorites is uh, your ability to play as him in Arkham uh, Knight and also Arkham City, and I believe Arkham Origins, but I'll have to check my research on that. Uh, but it was really cool character design to be able to play Nightwing on those. Something about his staff breaking apart and be able to use him as two batons. Awesome. Nightwing, you're awesome. And I normally have a Nightwing hat, and I don't know where it is. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't rep him today. <laughs> next. All right, guys, next on the list, we have 
the blind lawyer from Hell's Kitchen, Mr. Matt Murdock. Uh, this pro bono lawyer who lost his eyesight when he was a kid and developed super senses, which now are superpowers, but his other four uh, senses grew into this otherworldly superpower, which has made him very, very cool of a character. I haven't found uh, a lot of great games with Daredevil in it, but I have to say my most favorite right now is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. His costume is very closely designed by the television show. So if you like the TV show of Daredevil and you want to get a little game in it and play Daredevil, I would say Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 should be your uh, your choice for a little Daredevil magic. All right, we're going to talk about some super soldiers here. And you're right, you're already on my, on my trail. I'm talking about Steve Rogers... Captain America himself. There has been some really cool fighting games that he's been in, but some of the ones that I cherish when I was a kid was uh, Captain America and the Avengers. I've already talked about this game before, um, and it's obviously in my intro screen. I absolutely love this game, but really the one that gets my goat <laughs> is the uh, War of the Gems. You're able to play as Captain America and Wolverine um, and a few other characters, but this beat em up just had such a good style, just raw beat down from Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and others. And War of the Gems has been one of my favorite beat em ups and one of my favorite renditions of Captain America that I've ever played. So, War of the Gems, get it while it's hot. So early on, I mentioned Peter Parker and Spider-Man, and that universe has birthed some amazing characters in it. My favorite of all time out of Spider-Man is Venom, and he has had many, many renditions in multiple games. Most of the Spider-Man games, for the most part, have Venom in it somewhere. My favorite Venom uh, rendition is the one from Separation Anxiety. Whew. That game, uh, there is something about the character design. I really love Maximum Carnage, but I have loved that series for a really long time. I think they're both up there for games that I love with Venom in it, but this is my favorite Venom game. So if you guys haven't played Maximum Carnage or this one, Separation Anxiety, get on it. So you can't say Wolverine's name without it being synonymous with Sabretooth. Sabretooth has always been kind of a more feral, crazy, larger than life character, uh, and kind of a, a balance, if you will, even with Wolverine being so crazy, there has to be somebody that's crazier than him, and Sabretooth took that trophy. So my favorite game that he is in has been the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom series, but I believe that his first incarnation was the X-Men versus Street Fighter, and that was the first time I felt like I got to control Sabretooth. I thought he uh, he had some really cool, he had a really cool character design. There was something about this like fur collar that he has on it and his large nails. Um, it's always been cool that he is parallel with Wolverine and kind of their backstories um, and their healing factors. If you get a chance to play X-Men vs. Street Fighter or any of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, I believe he's in most of them, you can get a chance to play Sabretooth yourself too. There is yet to be a game that does this character right, and this is the closest thing that I can come up with. I would love one day for them to do it, but one of my favorite characters of all time is The Thing from Fantastic Four. That is right, I am talking about Ben Grimm, part of that fantastic team. He gets transformed after a radioactive blast up in space, and he turns himself into a rock monster. In fact, I just picked up this guy. Little Bobby Bob, bobble heady puppy pop figure. He lives in a world where not everybody understands him, uh, and he'll never be the same since his other uh, family members and friends can technically conceal what their powers are. He can never do that. Um, I've always thought that was a really cool story arc for the thing. 
The game, though, that you're going to want to pick up is Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. This was an example of them doing the thing right the best that they can. This was also a fighting game, but it took a page out of the Power Stone series for it being a solid level that you actually jumped around from like an isometric view. Um, you were able to throw various objects. You were able to uh, use your powers. There was a cool new storyline created for this game um, where these other genetically mutated uh, characters kind of came to fight the various Marvel characters, but this has always been one of my favorite games and the Xbox version is the best version. So uh, if you wanna get a chance to play the thing, see, he's right there on the back. You can barely see him. I'll see if I can get in there. Um, but man, this is this is an awesome game, especially if you want to experience the playing as the thing um, and not be that disappointed. So there you go. Amigos, thank you so much for sticking around, checking out the video. This has been my favorite comic book characters and some of my favorite games that they have been a part of. If you guys like my content, you like what I got going on, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you guys know when I post. I normally have videos out every Friday or Saturday. You can also check us out at Real Awkward Podcast on YouTube and Spotify or pretty much anywhere you can get your podcasts. Uh, that's R-E-E-L. And if you guys need even more content after this video, check out my Instagram page at Pacman Case. Until next time, or I talk to you guys in the comments, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.